When I was coming back from the lake in uh, 75. It was August 75. And uh, the 6th of August in 75. 6th of August has been a real important date a few times in there. And around the 1st of August is usually a time the Spirit moves. And the Holy Spirit fell on me then and he didn't leave me. And I began to prophesy. And the first thing I began to prophesy about was abortion. And uh, it was so horrible that I was prophesying it and seeing it and it was making me sick. And the Holy Spirit was telling me in the different ways that men would advance abortion. Now, one of the first ways I saw is like taking a sword and cutting a, an innocent baby all to pieces. Uh, that's the way they did, filleting a baby alive. And the Lord was speaking in the prophecies. That that's what uh, the women in the Old Testament did when they ate their own fruit of their womb. And then he showed me that they would pour acid on a baby, a live being, and it would be burned alive like with acid. And he showed me that the different ways that they would, the technology would increase in abortion. And he showed me that one of the last ways they would do is a pregnant woman could just take a pill and she wouldn't be pregnant anymore. That baby would just be pushed out. They've nearly got that technology here now. And that baby would push out and that baby would literally starve to death. And nearly immediately. And then the rest of the prophecies, the churches didn't like it. And many of them told me, well, they all told me, don't bring them. We don't want to hear that. And uh, the last of the prophecies was, as you destroy the firstborn, and you destroy the fruit of the womb, so will you be destroyed. There's a judgment upon this nation because of the... Uh, we are being cut to pieces with knives every day. Acid is burning the minds up of people all over right now. And I want to tell you, pills is killing them every day. Talking about the, uh, the whole uh, drug wars that are going on and increasing. And uh, that's what's happening through the drug culture that's increasing is all the fights and the wars, the murders. So it's happening at a beginning level at this point right now. And the judgment that's in this nation is according to the sins. And at this time, too, along with this, I was bringing... Uh, back then, it was sort of uh, uh, popular to have a homosexual in your midst. And they were justifying homosexuality and uh, bringing it into where it's normal. To receive it is a normal thing that you just go through. Well, it isn't normal. And once you justify a homosexual, you damn him to hell forever. But you stay against his homosexuality, and those that want free will get free. Right. And uh, I was bringing a word, there'll be homosexual diseases that cannot be cured. Some of you here have heard me speak this for better than 10, 15 years. And then they won't be popular to set in your midst. And there'll be venereal diseases that can't be cured. Just after that, herpes become real popular. And some of the last prophecies, in the end times, these diseases will be so rampant, it'll be real popular to be faithful to your married partner. It'll be popular to be faithful. And safe. Okay, so you're driving back from the lake, Spirit of God falls on you, August 6, 75, you begin to see all these things as he's driving about abortion. It just starts opening up right in front of him while he's driving. He goes back home, and then what happens? And I begin to call people and tell them about them. Pastors, all that I could. Been telling people about that ever since it happened. Uh, the next morning, a uh, devil came and spoke to me again. It just said, it took me four years of reading the Bible night and day before the Lord lit my light to where I could see I was saved. And when I have enough salvation, when I had enough faith to see I was saved, I didn't have any trouble at all on anything else. 
don't have no trouble talking to angels. And I don't have any trouble rebuking devils. If, if God has the power to save my soul, then all these other things to me are just real easy to move into. Tell you, getting, getting to that knowledge in that place that I know I was saved was the hard thing with me. Moving in prophecy and all these other things. Once you got to, I'll tell you, the strongest faith you can have is salvation faith. That's right. And I'm still growing in salvation faith. But my soul got saved totally. When I told Viola, she said, well, of course, you've been saved for four years. Men don't do things you do without being saved. Well, I said, I wanted to be sure. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I never got saved in the Baptist church. I got saved when Jesus spoke to me. And I got it clear. And I didn't have any trouble hearing what them devils were saying either. And I told that devil when he told me if I kept prophesying about what was going to be concerned with abortion and homosexuality, he said, if you keep speaking it, I've got the authority to kill you. And I told him, get lost. Now, we're talking about a demon appeared in the room and spoke to him face to face. So it's not kind of a picture in his mind. He's talking about an actual encounter because... When he was baptized in the Spirit, he began to move in discerning of spirits instantly. He could begin to see angels and devils. Why? I mean, he could see into the spirit realm just like you can see us sitting up here. So this yep. devil's in front of him talking to him. He's having a conversation. Yep. He told me the next time that I prophesied and told anybody about it, he'd kill me. He said, if you knock that off, uh, we'll move back. You can do all the signs and wonders you want to. Uh, you can heal people. And you can prophesy day and night if you want to, if you leave these two subjects alone. Abortion and homosexuality. Yeah, abortion and homosexuality. Immorality is what he was really saying. And he's saying, you know the way you were, you like the girls, we'll get you a couple of spiritual wives too. A demon told you Yeah. That. Or from the real goodies. Uh, you like fancy cars? We'll see that you get good orphans. If you'll only back up from these two things, and I said, you get lost. It was too hard getting here to back up. In, you know, I, I think we see the, uh, it's obvious, the priority of God's heart about those two subjects. He says, move in miracles, prophesy, touch people, big offerings, people like you, the church accepts you, increase your ministry, fine, we'll give that to you. Don't touch those two subjects. And that should alert us as to the strategy of the powers of darkness around the subject of abortion and immorality. Go ahead. You know, I think abortion and immorality, they're the same sin. They're all caused by the same sin. So... I told him, I'll show you. I just dialed up some person I know and told him what I just heard. Is the demon still watching you? Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got to show him who's boss. So, so you get the telephone and you call someone. And you're... Yep. I was telling him. I told him, go to hell if you want to know what I told him. You still had a little of that Marine in you, didn't you? You better believe it did for a long time I know <laughs> and so uh, he left when I made the call so me and my son we were doing tree work and I went out to spray I was going about five minutes and I found out that I ought to have took that devil a little more seriously because boy I started to hurt and from my waist down began to burn and to hurt and every muscle in my leg began to cramp and I turned back around to come home and things got worse and uh, went to the doctor and the doctor said get him in the hospital don't know what's wrong with him but he's in bad shape well, I knew what was wrong and I said the Lord will deliver me and I don't want to go to the hospital if I'm going to die I'm going to go home to die so we went home. The doctor says, you better take these pain pills, and he gave me some pain pills. And I went home, and oh, the pain was really bad. And I thought, I'll take one. And I took one. Oh, the pain real bad. And I said, if one will do any good, two will do better. So I took me another one. And man, it just got worse. 
and I was putting a third pencil in my mouth when blood started coming out my mouth and my nose just every time my heart beat it come up like that and I got a wet towel and wrapped it around me and I said man I'm a lot worse than I thought I was and uh, I put Viola out of the bedroom and I wrapped the towel around my face and I just fell on the bed the blood was just hemorrhaging out of his nose every time his heart beat because this demon came out and actually touched him right uh, you know where uh, you know the whole abortion process came and just touched you right here never thought of that but that's the truth that's why he touched me I, I uh, just turned as hard as a cramp from there on down and man it it was horrible pain and I laid there and boy that pain was terrible and then all of a sudden the pain was gone and uh, I was in a, a dark place and I looked around and I could see that I was in a cave and I looked down there and I saw a crystal light and immediately I knew that that light was the Lord it and I said well what do you know he did kill me I wonder how he was able to do that and uh, I'm going to the Lord and as I started walking it was like walking to the clock wasn't any farther than that and I'd walk out of the dark into that light and I was thinking thank God that this didn't happen a few years ago and then my thoughts were oh Lord did I get my robe clean did I have enough time and there was a man that walked beside me and he says you can look now Bob and see and I looked down and and my robe was like crystal light there wasn't no spots of darkness in it and I began to cry Lord God your faithfulness you brought me out of the bottom of the cesspool and you kept me I'm coming home and I'm coming home clean and I, I drew closer to the light and then I thought Lord Jesus here is a man that really has it made I got it over and I am clean and I'm coming home and I saw other men and women of different ages in front of me and as they'd come to him he'd reach out and grab them and kiss them and it was like two big old doors right here in his heart and he just like that and he's gone it's in his heart and just as soon as he's grabbing he's going and I looked to the side and there was another row of people about 97 of them these three of us and they were bound many of them were like mummy clothes and they were wrapped in dollar bills and they were wrapped in all manner of different things some of them was even wrapped in uh, like green yards that had been their God on the earth and whatever their God on the earth had been is what they were wrapped in and they would look at this beauty and this beautiful Shekinah glory and their minds I could see were totally clear and they knew all things clearly but they were on a an elevator and an escalator going down like into a cold storage place and they would look at that and their mouth would drop and they would see whom they had rejected and they went down into that place and they went there forever they were never again see that beautiful man or any of the light that was in him and I looked at them even as I was looking at him and I'm thinking I won't have to look at that no more I'm next and I think he'll reach out and he'll take me in boy I'm going home and he didn't he put his hand up and he said you go back Lord I don't want to that's tough go back because there's one thing you really sincerely had a desire to see souls birthed into the kingdom the Baptist Church implanted that into you 
and it's truly a thing that's in your heart, go back and touch some of the leaders of my early church and bring them and see that they dwell in the place to where that they can get the truth. I'm going to bring over a billion souls into myself in the last day. Go back and touch the leaders so they can bring them in. Okay, I got, I got two uh, uh, things to ask you before that. What do you mean, leaders of the early church? That's uh, be confusing. That so the last day church. Okay, the last day church. Uh, the last day church is being birthed now out of the old church. And the old leadership is coming to an end. And a new young leadership is being raised up to reign over an end time church that will bring forth the bride. He's not even dealing with bride yet. He's got to get him a church right so you can get the fruit of the bride. Your children, my bank accounts, my grandchildren will be the bride. You've got to have the church first and the right foundations. That's what he said. Come back and touch those that'll be the right foundations. Yeah, you've got to have leaders before you can have a church. That's you right. A church before you can have the, that other group that's right. full of glory. And so if the church could get a vision of what hell is, it's just as real as heaven. Okay, now that was my second thing. The Lord said, go back. Bob said, I'm a man that has it made. He says, I'm sending you back for souls. I'm sending you back to touch a little bit of the leadership uh, because the, God's leadership obviously is worldwide. I'm going to let you touch a little portion of it to build faith in them because I'm going to bring a billion souls. What, why did the, the Lord allow the enemy to touch you like that? Why did the devil get to come and touch you to kill you? Or do you have any understanding? Uh, well, for one thing, I was standing against some real strong powers and I didn't have any intercession behind me. And uh, uh, another thing, I was totally ignorant. And I was rebuking it out of my faith, but I feel I was without maturity and without a covering and without any covering whatsoever. You know, that just emphasizes the need of being involved in the local body and intercession because, you know, so much happens without covering like that. He was talking to me up there before the meeting about the necessity, uh, just uh, some fresh things the Lord gave him just recently about intercession and covering right now and the need to be involved in a body of believers and have intercession going up. Yeah, okay, man. so here you are. You're, you're coming back now. Your body's still in that bed in Independence, Missouri, in that little house, and it's basically dead as far as, I mean, it's, not going. So his by his spirit now, he's just confronted the Lord and he's coming back. Okay, take off now. So I came back in the bedroom and I looked at that body wrapped in that towel. And that had really hurt when I left it. And I didn't want to go back in. But there were two great angels that stood there. And they were standing there and their heads were bowed and they were praying for me. And I didn't know they did that. And there was a black angel behind them that had touched me. And they wouldn't let him touch me no more. And I looked at him. He saw me and he left, the death spirit. And when he left, the two angels, they turned to one another and they began to prophesy to one another. Okay, now I want to get this. So Bob's still in his bedroom, hovering over, looking at his body, looking at the angels. And ha as he said so many times, he said, Oh, Lord, I'm not going back in that body. I'm not doing it. And so he's still in the spirit, watching all this happen, looking at himself. And he hears these angels talk. And 